What's up, guys? Seth from Jump Ship here with your strength coach, Bob Durant, BD Strength. Uh, we wanted to take some time to just answer a bunch of questions that we've had coming at both of us uh, in regards to Bob's program, Cannonball Strength, and of course, Jump Ship Crew. Uh, we have obviously the Open coming in a few months, and people are getting excited uh, for 2021 and what their competition season is going to look like. And they're trying to make the best decision they can as to what program they should follow when and what goes into the programs that both of us write. So with that, uh, Bob, what's going on? How are you? I'm doing great. Another uh, beautiful 15 degree day in Minnesota. So no complaints, no snow yet, but hopefully we get some before Christmas because that's always nice. Yeah. Um, we have a tropical Christmas this year, but yeah, that's uh, that sounds nice, I guess. Yeah, I saw your tree. I liked your tree. Yeah, it's different. It's uh, it's definitely uh, very different. I'm experiencing something new this year, so we'll put it like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, still dealing with some COVID situations going on. I know your gym's closed right now. Our gym uh, out here in Hawaii is at like minimal capacity. Um, yeah, what are, you, what are you doing to keep people kind of motivated and training and stuff during, during this time? As, as, as I said, the competition season is still coming, whether they're ready or not. So I guess we got, I have a lot of my clients that stocked up on home gyms. So people went nuts with home gyms this year, um, which has been nice. Um, at the same time, it's actually been uh, forced me to be really creative, I guess. Um, whether it's programming or getting people to move for what they have which is fun and frustrating uh, as a coach, especially when you have limited access to stuff. Um, how can I make things still effective and fun, which tends to kind of get smushed together, right? When you only have so many movements or you can only do things so many ways. Um, so it's been a tough year, but at the same time, I think it's definitely helped me expand my coaching. Yeah. Uh, I liked it or not. Uh, so it's definitely been a good year for growth. Um, it's opened my eyes to some different stuff and also um, it's connected with you guys because I never thought I would really be doing like uh, online programming as far as like a group setting. Um, I've done it quite a bit with one-on-one -on -one clients, but writing a program for like the masses has definitely been um, a different but fun challenge. So, so we're a couple so months into that. How's that going for you so far? You're, you're pretty, you interact a lot with the people, you know, that are, that are your subscribers. You have probably quite a bit of data to pull from as far as like scores and leaderboard stuff goes like do you feel like your uh the way that it's kind of planned in your head is being executed by the dozens of people that are following so far yeah um so far so good we've had some really nice um weight jumps which i kind of expected for a lot of people um but i keep modifying the program kind of how it how i see people reacting to it mm -hmm. right like i got a baseline and I pretty much programmed out about six months, give or take, after talking to you, kind of rough idea. And then I keep tweaking it as we go, depending on either where I see more interest or where I see more weakness that needs to be um, worked on. I like the shorter cycles. Um, and a lot of my strength stuff actually comes from Pendele. Uh, Glenn Pendele uh, was one of my coaches, got to live with him, awesome guy dedicated basically his whole life just to like strength. That's all he cared about is being stronger. And even as far as like technique goes, he basically, which was almost always right. If I can improve your front squat by 50 pounds and your snatch deadlift by 50 pounds, more than likely your other lifts are going to go up. Right. So techniques important, but at the end of the day, it's all about strength and how do we get stronger? Um, so I have that, right? Cause I've always been a strength coach, love all things strength. Strongman, powerlifting, um, even did bodybuilding competitively for a little while. Not my strongest suit. Yes, there's probably pictures of me in a little tight mankini out there. Those are on the internet. You, can uh, you should not have said that. You're gonna have <laughs> that's gonna be like one of the top Google searches for the next like week now. Can't believe you put that out there. So those are out there. But then when I was looking for stuff, um, I came across Jump Ship, and I thought it was a great match. Jump Ship, right? in essence, basically is starting to tell people you don't need four hours worth of work to be elite. You can condense it and still progress the way you should. And that's kind of what I see a lot of strength and a lot of people, they try to do too much and they try to make it too fancy, to be honest. Um, 
basically, Pendley, I think, explained it the best. There's kind of three categories of people when you train. You got beginners. And a beginner doesn't mean you're brand new to lifting or working out. A beginner means that you can pretty much increase your strength week by week. I say build up to a five rep on push press, you hit 135, next week you're able to hit 140, 145. Right. Yep. So a beginner is someone who can constantly keep increasing week in, week out, little by little. Um, and that's a big chunk of the population. The next one would be like an intermediate lifter. So this is someone who maybe takes um, two, four, or even six weeks to increase their strength, which I think is like 90% of the population. And you can get really damn strong in that. And then you have your elite people, right? So elite people to me would be like, you need 12 weeks to improve uh, a major lift. So, so these where, people do all these crazy, sorry, keep going. Where, uh, where do CrossFitters fall into that? So like you work with a lot of strength at athletes like on your own and there's yeah. probably some that do cannonball strength, but the majority of what we are reaching these days is, is CrossFitters, right? So if you have your beginning lifters, obviously CrossFit is a great, um, methodology to get people into lifting right those that never really had before and you see exactly what you just said you have somebody who's PRing literally week after week of lifts because sometimes they haven't done the lift in three months because the of, of the uh you know variance of crossfit there's no a lot of people are not doing cycles or whatever so when push press comes back up they've done all these other shoulder exercises and everything else and wow 15 more pounds of my push press like I can't believe that happened. And then you have your intermediate where you said you think about 80, 90% of the athletes live. Like how long would somebody have to be crossfitting and doing the lifts on a regular basis for you to consider them to be in that intermediate group? Um, so some of that's just on like genetics and the person. Um, I've seen some people stay in the beginner stage for like two years. Like maybe they're just super gifted and we just keep rotating things out and they can always increase. Um, with that, and that's kind of why I program rep maxes in the strength program. It gives you the option to auto adjust or hit daily maxes in some kind of lift, no matter what. So it hits kind of like the, those two targets. You, so you have the one group who's always pushing their hitting maxes all the time. At the same time, we have an intermediate group who's either working up to top sets and maybe every other week they're hitting a top weight or hitting a PR in some kind of lift and we're pushing up lifts that way. The reason I would like to do that more than like a traditional cycle is if I can get you to PR and constantly increase lifts every two to four weeks, why would I not do that instead of just hitting a big rep, you know, once every 12 weeks? Right. If I can get you to get stronger faster, it's going to make you a better athlete. More than likely your technique's going to go up because you're lifting heavier. So those kind of match each other. You really can't get to crazy heavy weights and have trash technique. Your technique will increase as you lift heavier weights because it has to right so all right so that's kind of what I let me ask you this then so we might be we might already be going down a rabbit hole but that's cool we can we can steer the boat later on so you have kind of two schools of thought when it comes to to strength training getting stronger the first one you kind of talked about you're using like the allowing people to kind of find those maxes more often and um whatever you have like the reps in remainder or whatever based on you know and that's stuff you can explain, but you have now a lot of people, especially in the CrossFit world, who think the only way to get stronger is to follow these very rigid percentage-based cycles that keep you at a certain point because they don't. My dogs are attacking, so they they're uh, so they're staying at like these very rigid percentages, right? And week by week, they're trying to maybe move them up two and a half percent but continue to maintain that form and technique. And then six, eight, 10 weeks later, they get to test. My major problem with that is one, people in CrossFit, at least coaches, don't really consider the thought of your central nervous system, right? So to get stronger, and maybe you can touch on this too, your central nervous system has to be stimulated to, the, to a point, just like your muscles do, where it's, it needs to adapt. You need to put such stress on it that it, it feels this kind of new stimulus that it's trying to adapt to and recruit more musculature and be able to handle the stress of whatever you're doing or the load. And then you have, so if you're not doing that across that eight, 10, 12 weeks, how are you adapting other than fixing your, your, you know, your technique repetition or whatever else, how are you giving your central nervous system enough of a stimulus to be able to be ready to hit that 
100, 105, 110% load six, eight, 10 weeks later. Like, why is that missing from so many strength cycles? Don't you need to stimulate that to get stronger? Like, what, what am I missing as a CrossFit coach from that sort of way of thinking? I would totally agree with that. And like, I like percentages on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Like if I know exactly where that athlete's at, I'll do percentages. But if I'm programming for a vast majority of people and say, you're going to go five by five at 70%. All right. Some of these people might be new. So their one rep might not even be their true one rep. So having them do that weight isn't necessarily benefiting them. And then you have your other people that might not be able to hit that because they're good at one reps, but maybe they're not good at the other stuff. So we get this big discrepancy where I'm pushing some people too hard and some people not enough. Yeah. Whereas if we just constantly keep doing these buildups or rep maxes, so rather than saying, I want a five by five, I want you to build to a five rep max today. And then you're going to do some back offsets mm -hmm. or over the course of this EMOM, you're going to build to a top set of that day. Um, I like that better because it's going to push everyone in the same amount. Um, and if you have it that day, you're going to lift really heavy. Or you're right, if your CNS is tanked and you're not feeling it, it allows you to auto adjust. And it's almost gonna put you back in the zone where you need to be. So if you're rested, yeah, you're gonna hit 90% plus. But if today's just not that day, you're gonna work in that 80% range. And that's totally fine. It's still gonna give us a strength benefit, but it's not gonna completely throw you in the ditch for the next training session. That's, ex that's so just full disclosure to everyone listening, we've never talked about this before. And you and I think exactly the same way about strength training from two completely different backgrounds in that. I couldn't agree with you more. And that's why like even in jump ship, which does less strength training because it's focused on so many modalities. Um, we're always having people establish a one rep, two rep, three rep, five rep max or something two times a week in different movements, right? Because establishing that max of the day allows you to push your central nervous system to the point it's willing to accept and it will kind of auto govern itself, right? Like I always tell people like you have to have a good warm up to see kind of where you're really at for the day. But everyone has days where they go in the gym and they go to grab the barbell out of the rack and they pick it up and they go, holy shit, it's like not moving. Like why does this feel like it's 70 pounds instead of 45 pounds today? And that's literally like the first sign you should have of, okay, you might be a little bit like behind today. Like things are not firing the way they should. You're not feeling super strong. So like do your warm up and then test it out. And then as people are building, you'll know right away, is your, you know, is your technique good? Are you able to, you know, are you tight? Is, how's your mobility? You know, are you getting the positions you need to get to? How does, um, you know, are you feeling like, are you feeling your glutes firing? Are you feeling the tension in your hamstring today? Are you feeling like something's tighter than normal? And then as you start to get to 70 to, eight, that eight, 70 to 80 range, you know whether you're going to be going high or you're going to have to keep it at 80, 85 and just hit some technique, you know, sets for that day. But because you get to do this so often, you're going to have so many more opportunities to push when your central nervous system is feeling good and hit that PR, which is really not what I'm trying to get you to do. I'm not trying to have you celebrate once a week with a PR. I'm trying to get your central nervous system to be exposed to something greater than what it's been exposed to before so it can adapt and you can continue to grow in a steady, sustainable way. And that's, that's my whole thought process. After I left my last company, I didn't want to reinvent strength training, but I wanted to make it a simpler, more sustainable way for the masses, especially CrossFitters that have so much shit they have to get good at. And so, you know, most of them, so little time. So yeah. it's like, yeah. So I do like one lift a day basically in my program and maybe two, if there's like an extra piece, you're doing multiple lifts cause you're focused on strength. How are you balancing all this out across your, your shorter cycles and things like that? Um, so we would just start talking about super compensation, which kind of goes into when you're stimulating the CNS. So we have like status quo where your strength level is at. And we push that CNS farther than it has to go, right? Your body kind of dives down uh, or it starts tanking. And then when it recovers, it comes back above that strength marker. Now, super compensation can be planned out over the full cycle. It can also be planned out during each week. So there's a major one going on over the whole eight week program that we do, but it's also happening during each week. Mondays tend to be a little bit more volume, kind of middle weight. Then during the middle of the week, we back off a little bit and then we go really heavy um, towards the end of the week. So we're still getting these mini compensations each week. And that also spans out over the entire program. 
And that's basically true with all my programs, whether it's powerlifting, Olympic lifting, super total is kind of how I design a lot of my stuff around that. And then it kind of auto adjusts depending on the person or the group, depending on how much I think I can push them. Makes sense. And, um, and so how do you decide, so you can, you have so many lifts to choose from, right? So like in, in within CrossFit, if, again, aiming at a lot of CrossFitters here, they have to be good at the slow lifts and the fast lifts and everything in between, right? So you have to decide when you're going to have a focus on this, a little more focus on this, a little more focus on this. And I think kind of, we talked about it. The most general way to describe it is you're building people up for a super total, right? So they should be good at all of these lifts. How are you like getting people through all this to make steady progress and all these lifts at once so that my back or my front squat's not suffering because I'm focusing on pulling more and like vice versa. So that's the secret sauce. Um, oh, well, you don't have to give it all away, but maybe, maybe, uh, but that's the fun thing that a lot of us are, are getting into. Um, 10 to 15 years ago, no one really trained super total, right? Super total is kind of the new thing that's happened also because of CrossFit. So it's full Olympic lifting and powerlifting training, which most people, right, they don't like to combine them because they do interfere a little bit as far as like deadlift technique, pulling and that kind of stuff. Um, but they also interfere because one's uh, what I would consider power movements, which would be Olympic lifting. And then power lifting would actually would be more just strength movements. Mm -hmm. So then we actually have to look at the movements, not only how much are we lifting, but how much do they strain your CNS? So we can basically think of your CNS like a glass of water. And that's what you got. And each of those movements is going to take some out. So we got to find which ones will actually transfer over to the next, right? Because doing a match or a max effort snatch versus a max effort deadlift are completely different. Right. Yes, they're both max effort but a max effort deadlift is going to drain you so much harder than a max effort snatch. Right. So blending the two of those together so we don't get a ton of ear interference um, is, is kind of like a trial and error process. So I have like some rough guidelines that I like to follow, but even those I'm constantly manipulating on what I see kind of a deal. Like there's studies roughly that'll tell you how to put some of this stuff together. Um, but a lot of it either comes from what I see or what I've trained and what I feel like, um, all right, if I do a ton of snatch work, but then I go right into a ton of heavy bench work, does that affect my shoulder mobility? Do I get too much of a chest pump? Does that now uh, negate what I just did overhead because now I'm doing all this horizontal pressing? So some of it, honestly, is just trial and error. Yeah. Uh, working with clients to see what worked and what didn't work. It's kind of some of the best stuff I came up with super total stuff. So without giving them away, have you like – uh, found like your favorite combinations of things that should be like lifted together more often to prevent interference and like just random example like if you were going to deadlift uh, one day heavy that would be probably the most taxing movement on your CNS whereas if you were to push press or strict press that would be one of the least taxing lifts you could do for your CNS just because of you know, demand do you try to pair things like that together to get because you can still get a ton out of pressing a bunch, right? Even if your central nervous system is not at full capacity. So like, do you have a system for that basically without telling the whole system? Um, yeah. So I like to pair opposing stuff so I didn't get too much doubling up. So if I were to have a snatch day, more than likely we would front squat, right? Because if we're clean and jerking, uh, your clean basically mimics a front squat. So that would just be doubling up that same movement. So I would pair cleans with back squats more, snatches with front squats. Um, with that, if I'm doing overhead pressing work is where I do more of a pull day or a heavy pull day. So I get some discrepancy and I'm not overloading the muscles too much in a set thing. Um, we'll leave some of that at there. Um, but yeah, I try not to double up on too much of the movements. Um, or if I do go really heavy on one movement, I pull back on the other. So that's probably the biggest thing with super total training is each cycle is going to have slight variance, right? There's not one way that I can try to necessarily push all the lifts up every single time. So at the end of every super total eight week, the goal isn't to PR all five of your lifts. Right. Um, that would just be too much. That would be crazy. That's so weird. I could at least get, um, Hey, maybe I got your squats and your snaps. If I could get two or three of those to increase each time, but still maintain the other ones, I think that's a huge win. 
and then the next cycle we could address different stuff. You got to always kind of kind of ratchet this stuff up. Yeah. Trying to tackle too much is never going to be the answer. Right. Totally agree. So maybe you could give me some advice now. So, so one of the things I, I won't say I struggle with, but I have constant debates in my head as to what's right and wrong because there is no right and wrong really in my style of programming for CrossFit. It's try to figure out what's most effective and then mimic and tweak and stuff like that. So I have thought some days where I'm like, okay, if I'm going to make the uh, lift front squat, let's say, I might want front squats or thrusters or squat cleans in my workout as well to hit a little more. So we have like lower weight, high speed reps there where my heavier weights are lifting. And then maybe they're doing in the like accessory or extra, maybe there's sandbag squats or maybe I'm doing like max air. Like sometimes I feel like I should load, like almost overload one movement into my CrossFit session for these guys. So they're hitting it in every way, shape and form. And then I can avoid that movement a little bit the following day or maybe even the following two days, not hit it too much. Then on my other shoulder, the other devil, I have two devils, but the other devil is telling me, okay, you want to just, if you front squat it here, don't use it again in the workout because you've already hit that one. Try to maximize your time and mix up the movements so you're doing different paths and everything like that. But then tomorrow you can squat again because you only did a little bit here. So that's one of the biggest like, conundrums I'm constantly running into as a CrossFit programmer. Do I want to have an overloaded day of one movement pattern where it's there, it's varied in the style of that same pattern, or do I want to have just this kind of laundry list of different skills patterns that I want to hit and keep that going? Because a lot of times if I keep mixing it up, I'll find that I have a squat pattern, a variation of a squat pattern or a pulling pattern or something three, four, five days in a row. I'll have wall balls, then I'll have thrusters, then I have front squats, then I have a back squat that yeah, has the strength and like squat snatch. So now five days in a row, I've had them squatting, which I don't think is a big problem, but I don't know what the right answer is long-term. So I'm constantly trying to figure that one out. What do you think about something like that? Um, on some of that, I think it's totally fine, especially since there's- Which is fine, which is fine, <laughs> which one? I, I like the, the, the same pattern movements. Right, because we do need some kind of repetition in order to build that strength pattern up. Um, and by constantly changing out the movements, uh, which would be like a west side special, you are going to mitigate your, your body's adaptiveness. With those though, right, you're obviously having variances on which ones are heavy, which ones are more rep based. What I go heavy on every single day, no. What I go rep based every day. But if I have some kind of undulating where I'm going heavy, lower reps, and higher reps than the other, um, I like that. And I always, I can never remember the name. I'm so bad at this for being a strength coach. Prepoblin, prep, it's a P chart. But basically the chart, it comes out and, it, and it's done off a bunch of uh, uh, studies that tell you per um, percent range, what is the ideal number of sets and reps? Kind of gives you these vast numbers or what are the best bang for your buck? Um, and in there is kind of your discrepancy as a coach. Um, do you want to do um you know five by four do you want to do three by ten whatever but if you're staying in these reps these are what's been proven to give you the best bang for your buck and i use that on a lot of my programming mm -hmm. um I, I feel terrible for not being able to remember the name sort of the p prepolin prepolin it, give someone some homework to look it up so yeah i'm not a yeah but i use that on a lot of my programming and that's just a, a way for me to one, make sure I'm giving enough stimulus in there. And two, to make sure I'm not overdoing it um, and completely crashing. But with any strength training program, some of those are totally fine. Sometimes I do want to completely throw people in the gutter and have them pull out. Sometimes I do want to have them pull back. Um, and it also depends on what's your training goal, right? right? Like maybe at this point in my time, I, I just need to go heavy. Like rep based isn't really a thing for me. But now as we shift months later, maybe I need, do need to figure out uh, how to get more muscle endurance, more reps, reps under fatigue, um, that kind of stuff, especially like the open where it's, you know, more cardio based, higher rep stuff. Every now and then they're going to blend in some heavy lifting once you're already gassed out on cardio kind of a deal. Um, Cause that's another whole animal to train is how do you lift heavy once you've already been gassed out or done a ton of reps. All right. So you kind of just did the perfect segue in. Let's say, let's say probably, I just guess, two thirds of our total subscribers here that, uh, that follow some form of jump ship, whether it's Cannonball, Crew, whatever, are going to do the open, at least two thirds, right? Mm 
So what, you know, how long do they stick with cannonball? Do they stick with it through the open? Do they try to get, you know, they go to mid January and then go back to try to cram, you know, three, four weeks of conditioning in before that is cannonball going to adapt for the open? Like what would you suggest to somebody who's right now trying to get stronger, definitely getting stronger, falling cannonball strength, but knows they're going to be competing in the, whatever the second, third week of February. Um, we will start blending over this next cycle. So a lot of the cycles start to blend together. So we do eight week chunks for the most part. Um, first four weeks, the next four weeks are kind of like a mini peaking block, but in there we start to tie in where the next cycle is going to go. So with the open, we're going to start tying in conditioning with heavy lifting will be a big one, um, or lifting under fatigue. Mm -hmm. Um, it's good uh, to practice even if you're not going for the open. Um, there will also be kind of like jump ship does. We don't necessarily do them right now in cannibal, but I will put some other basic, uh, conditioning pieces in there. If you want to start keep make sure your conditioning is up to par what it needs to be for the open. But as we finish up this um, weightlifting cycle to hopefully bring your, your weights up a little bit more for the open, uh, we will go into like a true super total strength program, which will be like three days only, two days powerlifting. But a lot of those will be set up um, kind of like today's workout, for example. So today's workout, for example, um, the conditioning piece was every – five minutes for four rounds, 20 cal bike, 15 toes to bar, and then three one and a quarter front squats. And you were building up to a top set over that. Okay. So we're working on, yes, we're still pushing strength, but now you're going to have to do strength uh, under both physical and mental duress, which is kind of what the open revolves around. Yeah. So that, and, and that makes perfect sense. If somebody is following this, do you think, this would be enough for them to prepare for the open. Or should they be? Those are my dogs. <laughs> or should they? Uh, I'll ask that one again. So, if someone's following cannonball strength and their goal is the open and they just want to get, they need to get stronger for the open as well, will they need to add any additional conditioning piece, whether it's just straight up engine work or extra Metcons? Or do, are you confident, are you feeling confident that the program is enough to get them to the open and have them? as prepared if they need to, assuming this athlete's biggest weakness is strength, because that's why they'd be following. If their biggest weakness is strength, um, this will definitely set them up there. I will add in just some more um, steady state engine work. Yep. Um, that'll be totally optional for those people that are, are trying to go towards the open versus some of these people are just doing this as their full strength program. Um, over the next, um, starting in January, so what, oh damn, we're close here. Yeah. Uh, we will start putting in, I know it's crazy this year. It's, it's just nuts. Um, we'll start putting in some extra options of more just like steady state um, conditioning. If you do need a little bit more, or if you feel like, Hey, my strength's good, but I would personally like a little bit more conditioning. That'll be up to you. It'll be an optional thing, uh, but it won't be um, part of the main program. It'll just be like an extra finisher or a piece you can do on the side. Cool. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's awesome. Yeah, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a crazy year with um, the athletes having just finished the games like what like a month ago, not even, and now the open's coming in six weeks or so. What eight weeks? I don't even know. But trying to prepare for everything that could be thrown at you with a new season, with potentially what are they calling it, like semifinals or some something coming up that's gonna resemble the old regionals to compete in. I, I can't even. I've been trying to follow the new stuff. Andrea usually fills me in on just where we're going. Yeah, and I don't, I, I don't know either. I, I even have all kinds of inside contacts, and they tell me stuff, and I'm like, okay, so what does that mean? They're like, well, we don't exactly know what that means, but it's going to be something. I'm like, all right, just tell me when you know, because I can't keep up with this anymore. But, yeah, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be interesting. So, um, It'll be interesting because there's also right, a bunch of different training pieces. Cause it's almost like you have to train from each one separate. Because what you train for the open is completely different if you make it to the next level, which is completely different if you make it to the level after that. And I think a lot of people have to realize um, in their personal training preferences where their weakness is at and what are they actually, what's their goal? You know, like, are you an open athlete and you're just trying to improve your open score? Are you going to the open because you're actually trying to make it to the next level? Um, I think a lot of that would dictate where I would look for as programming knowing that I would say the open is a lot more um, body weight and cardio based. 
right. uh, based on solid engine. Uh, as you start getting up from that, then we get into um, what I would think is more like true CrossFit, which is like conditioning and heavy lifting um, combined, more skill work, a little more technical. Um, so a lot of that kind of depends on where you're at in your training and what your actually end goal is. To, to give people, if they're still even listening to us, some yeah, perspective, <laughs> some perspective, like uh, one of my remote clients is uh, Brandon Luckett, who qualified through the Open for the Games last year. His, his biggest weakness by far is his overall strength, and it's the raw strength. Not He can hang Olympic lifting-wise for the most part. I mean, he could be better in the clean and jerk. Snatches are a competitive amount, but his like back squat, front squat, deadlift are just so far off from – where the other like super elites are at. So actually we've been using some of your lifts in with some of jump ship stuff in with some of competitive extras and building like this super hybrid version of a program for him, which is still done in a very reasonable amount of time. Cause what your program, I mean, you could take, you could do cannonball strength somewhere between 90 minutes and two hours, depending on the day. Right. Pretty, oh, pretty it's definitely less than yeah. two hours. If it's <laughs> taking you two hours, you're taking some really big rest. So I've been trying and that's the, kind of the tricky part. Some days I can do, hey, I want it, something every 90 seconds, every two minutes, whatever. But with strength, you got to give a little bit of leeway in there. But most of the workouts, I would say plan on about 90 minutes. Yeah. That's um, the feedback I've got from the people who follow it is most people are getting it done with 90 minutes. They're like, why don't you put it on the clock? I'm like, well, because you need to actually rest between your strength sets. And like, if you need another minute, please take it. Don't rush. You know, like, yeah, people, people think uh, – there's two different training things. Crossfitters are very like CrossFit focused on what, like this is the way you do it. And sometimes they need to take a big step back, which I think is what you're providing a lot of people, which is nice. And it's hard, right? Cause you got to figure, right. Cause some people are like, Hey, I want to go, I want my EMOM. I want, you know, be on the clock. Well, Joe, you squat 315 for your top single. And you might have a guy over here who squats 525. So right. that was also very humbling. And I can't even tell you how many times I swore your name. So what I just needed to break is when I found jump ship, I've been doing heavy lifting forever. Uh, my body started to hurt. So I just wanted to do something different for a few months. So jump ship was awesome. Just kind of something for me to do just completely 180. At the same time, my cardio is meh. Except I can run a mile. I can. Yeah. I don't necessarily choose to, but my lifts are very high. So when I was forced to do some EMOMs or some percentage work uh, or do you know, tons of front squats at like 425. I was like, are you crazy right now? Um, but then again, I have a major outlier. I'm not a, a standard crossfitter. I am extremely strength biased. Right. Um, but you were, thing. you were hitting PRs and some of your lifts that you hadn't hit in a long time because yeah. of the, just the, and I'm not even necessarily sure it's the program, but it's the shift in the way you were training sent mm -hmm. your body for like, you know, down a loop, or whoa, like, what are we doing here? This is different. I need to quickly figure out how this is working and adapt and be better. And it was lighting a fire inside you, and it, it, uh, it worked for, yeah. Probably one of the biggest things that, is it made training fun again. Yeah. You know, and that's a huge thing, um, especially because I'm usually in the back corner of the gym. I'm that guy in the Oli platform. I just hang out back there and lift heavy weights all day by myself, which training by yourself, you know, it gets old. Um, but this was something that, you know, got me involved back with some of the other members in the gym. It got me lifting again. And yeah, it was, it was just a really fun summer. And I think half of that was why, yeah, I just started hitting numbers. Programming was great. I was able to recover more than what I was doing. Um, you know, whether it's stress, whatever stuff, I just, you know, wasn't into my old style of lifting. And now getting back into strength stuff, I'm finding that, that passion all over again. So nice. It's like hitting the reset button. It's awesome. Yeah, exactly. It was a great reset. Cool. Cool. Well, yeah, I hope, uh, I hope this conversation answered a lot of people's questions out there. Um, as always, if you, if anyone wants to know any more, just hit us up. Bob's pretty, uh, approachable online as am I, we're, we're responsive. Um, we're not so famous that your DM is going to get lost in our request, uh, thing. So just, uh, hit us up and we'll, we'll take the time to help you guys out. So, uh, thanks for listening. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Cool.